uh, hello everyone so i hope everyone had a lovely time in dubai so now the thing is like before beginning let me ask you a question how many of you guys in this room have a website or have a blog raise your hand so as i can see the count it's it's huge now now the thing is that as per a data of statistics almost 200 websites are being live every single minutes now that's huge which is near about almost 280000 websites which are being live almost in a single day and the shocking part is that this like these are the statistics which have been only done on some of the tier 1 countries now if you take all the like all the countries of the world and all the top top level domains then the counts is in millions almost in a single day now the thing is why i am saying this so ladies and gentlemen today my scope of the discussion is that the digital industry is revolving and it's really expanding very fast and to my surprise the competition is also going quite up, like quite higher so whether you are using a social media whether you are using search engines like google like bing or even any marketing platforms but the thing is the competition is actually getting tougher and people love to stay on the first spot now that's the main thing everyone wants to stay on the first spot everyone wants to grab the best piece of the cake from the internet and somewhere the things have become too much crowded so i often hear from my subordinates and my clients that what exactly we or the people can do to enhance the digital transformation journey and and what are the things because there are so many things social media there is seo there is email marketing and i i have heard uh, two great speaking today i think one from the champions group and one from fitbit so i think there are more ways of marketing now the thing is that like a real digital transformation happens by blending a lot and a lot of marketing modules all together and this is and this word will be my speech today about some of the end to end case studies with with real data is like what we have achieved for four campaigns across b2b b2c e-commerce and b2 b2c so let us so uh, we will start with a b2c seo campaign uh, we have recently worked with a brand from us named as incrediware which sells knee sleeves and their competition was very very crowded and very tough uh, they existed they existed in 17 different countries all across the world and have an and have a huge inventory so their initial objective was obviously to gain traffic and the brand awareness uh, just like any other campaign does so when we first started we found three essential loopholes on their campaign right from the very beginning so what we have found was that their content was not aligned that was like semantically not aligned with the users what the users want and what they are serving was totally wrong which makes me conclude that as per google three of the important ai driven guidelines were not being followed by them so as you can see from the screen like i'll not go much into the depth but the point was that their content was not serving the intent which we have discovered using uh, like uh, by the way we also have one of our own patented uh, platform as a web tool which we use to uncover user semantics and dynamics okay now uh, then we decided to change the 3c of their campaign the content type the content format and the content angle so moving down to the first one the content type so we have actually started to make sure that their campaign should be having a well structured architecture like their blog posts totally segregated with their user with their user audience like the users who would be targeted with the long form of keywords or the informational suppose if if anyone one is just looking for that uh, the key difference between a knee sleeves and a heated knee sleeves now those audiences can be targeted into the blog section because obviously they are looking for information doesn't necessarily mean that they will actually land for a 
commercial intent. The second thing is the product pages. So we, we had a separate set of SEO guidelines for the product pages where uh, the product structure data, the reviews, the uh, set of the on-page variables, everything we have optimized. And one of the important asset for any B2B brand is the category pages because this really damages a lot of the crawling ability for any search engines or social media. If not rightly optimized, they can literally ruin the user experiences. So, and last but not the least, the landing pages where they have their important money or the, or the important like high valued products. After that, the content format. So once again, we have identified which segment content falls on which areas. For, for instance, like the products, the blogs, the categories, and et cetera. But we have actually structured all of them in a well-defined format. For example, for the blogs, we have set up the how-to guides, the step-by-step -step tutorials. For the products, we have the lists posts, we have the opinion, and, and obviously the reviews, which I mentioned. And last but not the least, for even the categories, we even have done the comparison segments as well which can be well seen in uh, some of the giant websites like Amazon or even Walmart, or even eBay, to be honest. Mm. Lastly, the content angle. So let me switch down to the type of the keywords. The thing is, keywords can always be targeted to what is informational and what is conversational or even what is transactional. So we have rightly understood like which keywords would be falling under which areas. If someone wants to grab some piece of information, then they should be targeted towards the either the category pages or the blog posts, whichever is relevant. If uh, someone is going after the competitive keywords, which, which can really bring some huge sales, then we would be targeting those on the product pages or obviously the landing pages as well. Now, we have done that for literally tens of thousands of keywords. Just two of the examples I have just shown here. Okay, now moving down to the website content structure. So once again, content should be contextual. It's not like you just put run like a huge lengthy articles, like ten, like thousands of words. Honestly, it does not even make sense. It should be interactive uh, by engaging with the videos, the rich texts, contextual graphics, animations, whatsoever. So we have tried to make that interactive and we studied a lot of the user dynamics, like how much percentage they are scrolling, how much time they are staying on the campaign, how much they are actually shifting or switching down to some other websites from this particular landing page, and even uh, what are some of the uh, hidden key performance indicators, like even if the users are being satisfied, uh, and what all dynamics. So now, moving down to the next, like what after that we did was, we even fetched some of the essential keywords from the people also asked, and I think this is one of the very powerful thing which uh, various people can use. We searched simple Google, and we used a lot of the keywords grabbed straightly out from the people also searched, because this is where, uh, like ladies and gentlemen, I think uh, like uh, there would be a huge amount of traffic that can come to any campaign if rightly optimized. So. Just once again, like WebTool is one of our, uh, like we invented WebTool, uh, and this is uh, like uh, can be done as a part of an automation. Also, we we can just fetch all the keywords using that, and we have done the optimization. Then then we have done a bag of words optimization. Now this is an AI concept. Uh, to explain in a layman term, what we have done is like in the entire corpus. Now corpus means the collection of the words in the total internet. Now niece leaves on how many websites, millions and billions of websites, wherever the niece leaves is and what are the related keywords. We have calculated like an algorithm, it, uh, like an algorithm of what associated keywords have the highest frequency because higher the frequency, greater would be the competition and that can drive both the traffic and the consumer intent. So we digged out some list of that. Uh, this can be done manually also, by the way, by running some Python codes and all. And then comes one of the interesting portion. We have defined the cosine similarity. Now, this is not rocket science. What this is actually is like cosine similarity is one of the uh, patented algorithm from Google, by the way. So this proves how much similarity score your content is having, like your content is having against 
a particular set of keywords or structure. For, for example, if I uh, give every one of you to write about your favorite foods, and suppose every one of you write your own version. Now, your favorite food, now what would be the most similar content out of every one of you? That score can be justified using cosine similarity, which is a set of algorithms from semantic search, or from which is also an element of AI, by the way. So we can calculate how much uh, similarity scores is between the pages, and definitely we try to make sure that we had the best score from the competitors. So the process was simple. We have picked out 50 competitors. We have taken their mean value. <clears throat> we have taken their mean value of all of their similarity scores. We have done a lot of A-B testings by multiple page variations. And after that, what we have done is we have simply, uh, like by a lot of tuning, tuning, and tuning. And this, this is not a one-day work. This took almost uh, one and a half months' time. And when we achieve the right similarity score, this is when we can actually logically prove that our piece of content is well similar across all of the other competitors. So some of the key areas where we have gained. So as you can see, effective knee sleeves, we were actually ranking on the first place. In fact, knee sleeves is also ranking on the first place for this particular campaign as well. Our user metrics got improved, right? Uh, the two arrows you can see is the uh, is the process. The, the first arrow is when we upgraded the content. The second arrow is after the A-B testing. And the things does not end here. Now we have shifted from the content to towards the technical area, like the core web vitals. We have figured out the essential uh, important elements, uh, what is causing an user experience damage and all. Uh, the mobile usability and yes, the ease of navigation by in, by introducing a lot of navigational features into the websites. Uh, as you can see, like we have tried to compress the images, uh, reduce the dependency on the JavaScripts. Uh, in short, we try to make sure that the site is beneficial for both the human beings and also for the bots as well. Because unless the crawlers does not crawl the campaign, there would be no result. So. Content was for the humans, and making a site well-structured are for the crawlers or the bots, because once again, if social medias or search engines cannot even crawl the campaign, then there is no point of continuing. And yes, some uh, improving in the load times and well. Uh, so these are the screenshots like which we have done uh, for improving the page mobility issues. We have maintained a well architecture, uh, like a proper well architecture, no crossovers of any product pages or category pages which are not relevant at all. Uh, in fact, we utilized another algorithm known as LDA, or Latent Dirichlet Allocation, which is just the reverse of cosine, which measures the relevancy signal. So we, we also try to maintain a proper hierarchy of the entire architecture as well. Now, this was the end journey. If you can see, uh, their organic traffic have grown by a huge factor. Most important thing was that their revenue, like their uh, almost their like their quarterly revenue hit two million US dollars from scratch, by the way. So this was and this journey was purely organic. Uh, I have skipped all the uh, performance marketing aside, like the PPCs, the email marketing. But even on those also, we have done something or the other. But most interesting thing was on the organic reach because uh, that was our end goal. Okay, now this is something I'll run very quick. This was another from the B two B segment. The, the only challenge we faced here is, uh, I will skip this portion, yeah. So the only f uh, thing is that the first thing, important thing is we labeled out the correct call to actions properly. Now, for any B2B campaign, a proper call to action is very important, unlike the B2C industries, because uh, for any business to business professionals, the call to actions, the lead magnets, the lead modifiers, now these are the places which really can make a high lot of difference on the campaign. In fact, if I share you a statistics in my own campaign, just by changing uh, the content form by a few pixel difference have actually increased our leads by up to 111 percentage. So we have done a lot of A-B testing to understand which lead magnets and which lead uh, modifiers actually is helping them. 
so this actually increased their entire deviation range, as you can see. So these are some uh, statistical data for both the devices of desktop and mobile version. But we did not stop stop right there. What we have actually done, and as an extra, and which really makes a sense for the B two B industry, is that we also focused. Uh, on the trend of the keyword as well, because that is very important for businesses. Uh, because sometime on the consumer end, on the B2C, uh, trend might not be a relevant point because obviously the what all keywords are being searched, what all keywords are being looked for, uh, like people only jumps on that because that increases the level of traffic. But for B2B, search volumes always remains on the minimal side. Uh, like if, if someone searches an SEO company, obviously the searches will be on the lesser area. So we have focused on the seasonality, on the trend lines, like how the keywords would be having a trend in the long run. So you can say like we have done a seasonal analysis of the keywords and that is where, and that is how we have taken the SEO journey ahead. And for B2B, UX really matters a lot. So, so these are the six principles we have followed on the UX element. Uh, I'll not go into deeper here because uh, these are purely technical, but we have tried to maintain the six and seven important pillars and we have really made sure that the UX is groundbreaking because for B2B industry, this is really important. And obviously we uh, try to reduce the bounce rates as well. So, so now the thing is that after doing all these things, uh, the important growth which they have faced is near about 132 percentage growth in the organic traffic and also on the impressions as well, as you can see. Now then moving on to an e-commerce campaign. Uh, once again, the key differentiator in an e-commerce campaign is that, uh, first of all, yes, the UX and the trend line should be really monitored because in an e-commerce campaign, that's very important. In Amazon, in summer, the summer dresses would sell better. In winter, the winter dresses would be selling better. So. Uh, like uh, catering to the seasonality needs can really help an e-commerce campaign to grow, uh, provided you are serving a wide range of products. Okay, now, now as a, as a part, what what extra we have done is that we have also tried to improve the user experience point of views views as well, such as uh, like uh, like few things like uh, what all things they can easily search for, like a proper drop down segment. And most important thing is the customer journey. Now this is very important for an e-commerce campaign because the customer journey occurs in an AIDAL model. Like uh, at first you need to increase the awareness, then interest, then desire, then action, and then the conversion. So this pipeline is very important, AIDAL model. Uh, it's not mentioned here on the presentation, but this is something how this looks like in three stages. And the decision stage comes at the very later. So Whenever someone wants to perform an e-commerce campaign, then you need to keep aside the, once again, from the B2C campaign, the keyword search volume, the trend line. You need to really focus on the seasonality and the customer journey, what the customer, how the customer would be, uh, like how the customer would be switching down the track. For for example, if you, like if any anyone, if you buy uh, Louis Vuitton, then you, you would find that whenever they launch a campaign, they first send an emailer about how this fashion trend can uh, boost a certain generation. Now, uh, once they start reading the blogs and blogs, then only they would try to sell you the, the product. And this is, uh, this is not only about Louis Vuitton, but any e-commerce brand does that effectively by following the customer journey pipeline. And obviously, uh, this is how this should be segmented. The keyword intent, as you can see, uh, <clears throat> For the informational keyword intent, this should be targeted towards the blogs and the guides. For the commercial and the investigative, this should be targeted towards the reviews or the category pages. And for the transactional, uh, it obviously should be on the product service or the landing pages as well. Uh, uh, these are some of the growth. Uh, by the way, their main purpose was uh, social and organic both. So we have... Uh, we, we had a growth on their both social and organic. Uh, the only difference was uh, this was an Indian campaign, so they did not target it elsewhere. So the figures uh, are a bit less, but we, we had a growth uh, over a single quarter. Now, moving down to the last portion of my presentation today. So lastly, we have a B2, B2C campaign, and an effective example I have taken here is an iGaming campaign, a campaign because I came across uh, like 
often times that like iGaming industries are very restricted. People cannot promote anywhere. People, uh, people literally cannot even run Google Ads. It's restricted. People can do no advertisement, no paid promotions, no nothing. Even in emails also, this would get blocked after a few emails. Now, iGaming campaign is a very strict area where only organic marketing can help. So what we have essentially done is very simple. We have first, uh, like, like modelize the entire campaign in an affiliate point of view. We, we have uh, first uh, built some micro websites based on how the iGaming website is catering to multiple things. So this helped us in a multi-blogging platform so that this increases the authority. I have a screenshot somewhere here. So just give me a sec. So yeah, so this is the uh, thing what, which I was saying. So in an, in an iGaming campaign, the best and the effective area is to increase and raise the authority signals, uh, like the how much trust your campaign is providing, how much well authorized link backs your campaign is providing. Now, the easiest way to do that is three important things. The first thing is having an online presence on web 2.0 platforms, things like uh, like a blogging platform where you can put up several blogging platforms all together, writing well articles about you and linking back to your campaign and increasing the user experiences on the web 2.0 platforms because that is where the user engagement signals would pass and your authorities would rise. The second thing is collecting a good amount of social signals in form of reviews, testimonials or any other viable methods. Uh, so that is that's the second point. And third and most important thing for an iGaming niche or an affiliate niche is that for any iGaming industry, you need to be reluctant on backlinks. Now, here my conclusive statement would be don't like we, like don't just follow blindly and build backlinks, rather focus what your competitors are building, use data-driven methods. Uh, there, is, uh, there are quite a couple of tools in the market like Ahrefs, SEMrush, by which you can dig out what all backlinks your competitors are building and fetching the essential backlinks and only performing those. So this is a gap, like, anal like analyzing the gap over the competition and just ut like utilizing a skyscraper technique to build a better version of your website and this will actually give you a good iGaming campaign success as well. So I would like to conclude by saying that any digital transformation journey, like whether it, it is an SEO campaign, whether it is an, uh, like an inbound marketing strategy or a social strategy, uh, like none of the strategy can be successful if all the bits and pieces are not done in a right manner. Uh, I, I keep hearing people that content is important, technical is important, AI is important, or uh, this is important, that is important. But the thing is that every single thing is important. So because uh, the world is getting competitive in the digital upfront, specifically after COVID, uh, startups, MNCs, uh, MSMEs, everyone is getting digitalized. And I think the competition is getting quite higher. Now to cope up with the changing algorithms and the changing competition, search engines, social media platforms are leveraging more on AI and they are really checking all the areas. It doesn't matter if something is small or big, like you need to have your A game on every single area because the little things can really make a big difference in the long run for your campaign. So that's my presentation, thank you.